Hello, good evening, and welcome to tonight's edition of Resistance TV. Last week, you may have seen the Labour Party prescribed four anti-racist socialist groups. The organisations affected were Labour Against the Witch Hunt, Labour in Exile Network, Socialist Appeal, and our very own organisation, Resist. Anyone found to be a supporter of any of these bodies now will be automatically expelled. And with no sense of irony, the chair of the party, Annalise Dodds, justified the prescriptions by saying the party was getting on with the job of making sure the Labour Party is a safe and welcoming space for the benefit of all our members. Except for those pesky anti-racist socialists, it seems. Meanwhile, Keir Starmer said it was all about stamping out toxic extremism. Now, one of those pesky anti-racist uh, socialists is Mark Wadsworth, who's our guest tonight. Uh, he won a landmark libel action against the Jewish Chronicle last week after they made outrageously false allegations against him. And it was the culmination of a campaign of harassment to which they'd been subjecting him. Mark was expelled from the Labour Party in 2018 for allegedly bringing the party into disrepute following bogus anti-Semitism allegations. But he's a veteran anti-racist campaigner and founded the Anti-Racist Alliance in 1991. He also helped the Stephen Lawrence family get some semblance of justice and even introduced them to Nelson Mandela when he visited the country. He's also a journalist and an author and his book, Comrade Sack, is well worth a read. So, Mark, tell us what happened at the uh, libel uh, uh, court uh, last week then, please. Well, there was the defamation I suffered at the hands of the Jewish Chronicle, as you've just mentioned. Uh, this was a concerted campaign by them uh, for five years. Uh, almost 50 articles I was mentioned in, uh, published by the Jewish Chronicle, uh, all negative over that period of time. And I reported them to the press watchdog and they had to change more than a dozen articles that accused me of abusing a Jewish MP, someone I didn't know was Jewish and I'd merely called out as working hand in hand with the Daily Telegraph, uh, a Daily Telegraph reporter, which I observed with my own eyes at the launch of the Shami Chakrabarti report into anti-Semitism and other forms uh, of um, uh, hatred and discrimination, in including racism. Yeah. And I just decided enough was enough. Uh, they'd just gone too far trying to associate me with potential criminality, the hunting down of Jewish activists in their homes to take care of them. And we know what that means mm. in terms of harassment, in terms of, uh, you know, uh, criminal acts. Mm. And they said that I'd been at a meeting where this had been proposed, a meeting I hadn't even attended. And they used a mm -hmm. photograph of me from the Chakrabarti report launch in June 2016 and said this was a picture of me at that meeting way back in March this year. So a doctored picture used of one of only two black activists that were alleged to have been at that meeting, Jackie Walker and myself. And I think that in itself has some, some significance, doesn't it? Why did yeah. they choose other people's photos? They were turning yes. me into a target. And I have to say that it's the Labour Party that is culpable because had they not expelled me, disciplined me, witch hunted me way back uh, in first 2016 when I was suspended and then almost two years later in 2018, then I wouldn't have been fair game mm. for publications like the Jewish Chronicle no. and the mainstream media. Where of I was course, I mean, and uh, I mean the mainstream media, Mark. The mainstream to, media, well, Mark. Media and smeared. Well, the mainstream media, Mark. When you were uh, uh, first suspended and, and then expelled, I mean, it was sort of wall to wall coverage uh, of the of the case and and we know that it was bogus the allegations that were made against you and uh, uh, i as you know obviously came and gave evidence on your behalf at the kangaroo court it, it is the so-called national constitutional 
committee, it didn't really matter what we said, they'd already made their mind up. But I just wondered what kind of um, coverage have you had? What interest has there been from the mainstream media in your successful libel action, given their interest when you were falsely accused and then suspended and expelled from the Labour Party? Every single publication in Fleet Street has trashed my name. I talked about trial by media. And yet when it comes to my vindication, my court case in front of Mrs. Justice Collins Rice at the Royal Court of Justice, just one journalist turned up mm. from City AM. The rest of the more than a dozen Fleet Street newspapers, Press Association, Reuters, AP, boycotted the hearing. The broadcast mm. media who have tracked me boycotted the hearing. Uh, they had license before that to uh, attack me. And you'd have thought yeah. that at least they put a few paragraphs in their newspapers saying that mm. I had had this success. So I had to rely on Press TV, Squawk Box, The Canary, uh, Morning Labor Star, List. I think, covered it, didn't it? Morning Star was very good. Labour List ignored me. Tribune, New Statesman, you name it. And what about I think Navarra we, Media? Did they cover you? Navarra I mean, Media I was going to come on to because Aaron Bastani, who has resolutely ignored my case, attacked you, attacked Jackie Walker, unconscionably had the temerity to go on to Twitter and call out the Jewish Chronicle for its misdemeanor. And mm. quite rightly, there was a backlash against his tweet saying, well, where have you been all this time? Mm. And his reply was to say, uh, Google Navarra Media and, and Mark Wadsworth. And if anybody who does that will not find me on that website. What do you think of that? Mm. Well, I mean, it's uh, it's really very sad, I think, that Navarra is one of the preeminent sort of left-wing uh, platforms, or they call themselves a left-wing uh, platform. Regrettably, some of the people seem to be, that are associated with it now, seem to be more interested in the kind of optics uh, left rather than actual uh, socialism, really, and, and certainly don't seem to have much <laughs> interest in solidarity anyway. But, uh, yeah, I would have thought that they would have had you on, uh, uh, Mark. Uh, I mean, they, they do claim to be, uh, you know, a, uh, uh, a down the line, as it were, with a left bias, if you like. Um, but nevertheless, they do claim to be a um, bona fide, uh, you know, journalistic uh, entity. And uh, this is your case, I would have thought. A very interesting one uh, for anybody who's interested in, in Labour politics. And they, they do cover Labour issues, uh, quite extensively. And so, uh, you know, as I say, it was just surprising that they've not brought you on, particularly given that Aaron did, uh, you know, tweet, as you mentioned, about the uh, Jewish uh, Chronicle and calling calling them out. Would have One would have thought they'd have followed up with it with an invitation onto the programme. But that's not been forthcoming then, you're saying, Mark. Well, a little bit of reciprocity would have been appreciated. I mentioned them in the new edition of my book, which you just kindly uh, promoted, Comrade Sack. Comrade Sack, yeah, yeah. yeah. MP of political biography, the new edition uh, that, it, that is out. If you Google my name, you'll, you'll find the book. Uh, and so I gave them the courtesy of uh, quoting someone on their broadcast in the book that I was thought was relevant in terms of talking about Corbynism. Uh, no such luck, I'm afraid. Uh, they call themselves mm. luxury communists. Uh, it's mm. so luxury, it's not communist anymore. It's certainly not mm. socialist from what I can opine. Uh, and it's very sad, given, as you said, quite rightly, that uh, they are a major uh, left wing, I put in quotes, uh, online platform. Yeah, I mean, when I was first elected, uh, Mark, I mean, you know, I was on there a, a number of times, actually, and uh, uh, you know, they, they did seem to be very much... Um, a, a platform for, you know, the Corbyn left, as it were. And, uh, you know, until the, until the anti-Semitism smears really ratcheted up, 
uh, you know, they were they were really, I think, a very sort of helpful uh, platform. Uh, things seemed to start to go wrong, um, probably towards the back end of 2018, certainly beginning of 2019, definitely when I was uh, suspended. You know, they seemed to be uh, turning turning tail. And it, I was listening to their program, actually, just the other day, talking about um, uh, Jeremy uh, Corbyn and... Uh, this was a, 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 rec a recording of, of the program from last year when he was himself suspended, and uh, they were saying, I mean, they, well, they were a, they were a, they were outraged that Jeremy had been suspended, but they'd said that you know he was wrong to say what he said and he should have played it differently. And again, just sort of you know, it's not so much about telling the truth; it's about, as it were. Um, uh, you know, playing to the optics, and they didn't think that you know the optics were right for him to say what he said, even though it was correct. They acknowledged what he was saying was correct, but just wasn't sensitive to to say that. I mean, and and clearly, you know, the the Israel lobby, the Zionist lobby, has uh, really done a job, I think, on on the mainstream media, but on Navarra media too. I mean, a lot of people are running scared of of calling out the Israel lobby and. And speaking out about the weaponization of, of anti-Semitism and are talking about it is as if it's a, an absolute proven fact that Labour had a major crisis with anti-Semitism when we know that's an absolute falsehood, that there was no crisis of anti-Semitism in the Labour Party and very minor examples there may have been. I never came across them, I've got to say. And I've spoke to many Jewish comrades who similarly said that they never didn't experience any anti-Semitism themselves. I think one um, Jackie Walker's a partner said that who's Jewish said that uh, he'd encountered an example of uh, of anti-Semitism in the Labour Party in 1970. Uh, I think he joined the Labour Party in 1968. So over 50 years. So you know, I mean, the figures didn't 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 hold up, and we know that the way the party responded, the way the leadership responded, contributed ultimately to the demise of the Corbyn project, and ultimately led to Jeremy himself. Being suspended, I think you and I were were saying as much uh, several years ago, Mark. But nobody in the in those leadership positions would would listen to us, and uh, uh, you know, people like John John McDonald was just kept saying, "Well, we'll just do this one more thing, and this will draw a line under it." Different, you know, different um, capitulations and accommodations and apologies will draw a line under it, and of course, it never did. All it did was to embolden them and make them make them stronger. And this is why I think it was very regrettable that, you know, there wasn't a robust defence of you when you were targeted. And indeed, when people like Ken Livingston and uh, Tony Greenson, and indeed, of course, Jackie Walker and many others as well. But these high profile figures like yourselves, I think there was the perfect um, uh, alibi, if you want to put it like that, to stand by you because of your record. And similarly with Jackie. And and Cyril and Cyril Chilson and others, you know, when they're targeting um, anti-Zionist Jews, uh, that's when I think Jeremy should have been coming out and speaking out in your support. Certainly couldn't have been any worse than what actually happened in the end. And I think actually it would have done him a lot of good. And indeed, when he when he did, I think, stick to his instincts, um, then, you know, the response from the public i think was was very positive you know when he came out swinging about um the uh, uh situation in, in palestine and when he spoke out against the foreign policy having a, a an effect on on you know creating a, a potential threat to to the population here after the manchester bombing uh, a lot of uh, his advisors were telling him not to say that but that actually struck a chord with people and well, you know, I, I just think Jerry, record, as you know chris uh, as saying that um, I'm opposed to all forms of hatred. Of course. Anti-Semitism, anti-Jewish hatred, uh, homophobia, Islamophobia. And um, yes, it exists in society. It exists in the Labour Party. Uh, you know that it's rampant Islamophobia in the Conservative Party. And wherever it rears its ugly head, we must confront it. We must uh, smash it. My record goes way back, uh, as you know, um, in the anti-racist alliance from 1991 onwards. Yes. When we were on the Isle of Dogs, opposing Derek Beacon, who was the fascist BNP's first elected councillor for Tower mm. Hamlets. 
uh, fighting in Welling in southeast London to get the Nazi bunker BMP headquarters closed down, mm. being on the picket line outside News International when the Sunday Times ran the despicable uh, David Irving uh, version of the Goebbels diaries. Yes, yes, indeed. Yeah, uh, You know, with Ali G and other young uh, Jewish uh, comrades uh, working with uh, Jeffrey Byman, the eminent lawyer, to frame the racial harassment bill, uh, sections of which became law to outlaw racial discrimination, harassment, um, racial violence. Uh, indeed, we even worked with um, Sir Ivan Lawrence, who was then uh, very prominent in the Board of Deputies of British Jews, when he was chair of the Home Affairs Select Committee and supported uh, this legislation. So my record goes back a long, long way uh, on mm -hmm. the front line of the fight against the fascists, the fight against uh, anti-Jewish uh, hatred, uh, anti-black racism, Stephen Lawrence, yes. uh, introducing them to Nelson Mandela. And, and it's just despicable, uh, you know, that uh, Jackie Walker's partner said this to me, Graham Bash, the editor of Labour Briefing, that no prominent left voices, we've talked about the publications, but I'm talking about MPs. I'm talking about organizations on the left that we both know about came to my defense. And I just find that uh, inexplicable. Could you expi explain why it was only you and Clive Lewis? Well, I mean, I think that pe people were running scared. There was no doubt about that. I mean, as we know, anti-Semitism had been had been weaponized, and people were keeping their head down. I mean, that was I, I kept saying, look, the point of solidarity is to you know you have to express solidarity when it's difficult, not just simply when it's easy. And uh, you know, if a few more people had stood shoulder to shoulder, we wouldn't be in that situation. But Mark, I'm just interested. I mean, this must have taken a personal toll on you. I mean, you're a long-standing anti-racist campaigner. I mentioned in the introduction, you've just reiterated it there, forming the anti-racist alliance back in. 1991. That's been your whole raison d'etre, then to be accused of effectively being a racist, a bigot. What kind of a personal toll did that did that have on you? I mean, it must have been really quite difficult to take. Well, I've suffered in terms of health, my mental health, my emotional health, my physical health. My family have suffered. I have children, I have grandchildren, and people don't Take on board the toll it has mm -hmm. on children watching newscasts where someone they love is ridiculed and trashed. And they can't understand it in their little heads. My granddaughter said to me about the Chakrabarti report launch incident. Why is that woman walking out of the meeting mm -hmm. when you're talking about black people? Because I'd said in that one minute clip, yes, which everybody's completely ignored. Look around this room. This is supposed to be the launch of a report into anti Semitism, into forms of racism. Where are the African Caribbeans? Where are the Asians? We really need to get our house in order as the Labour Party. Mm. And it's at that point that Ruth Smith walks out like a southern mm. belle in the mm. deep. South. And we think of Emmett Till, who was lynched for daring to look at a white woman. And people have said this. Yeah. That I was actually, I'd not into victimhood, but I was the victim of a racist incident. Yeah. I was the only black man that got up to speak that day. And I was heckled. Yeah. How, oh, yes, I mean, how dare yeah. you? How absolutely yeah, dare absolutely. you even speak or exist? Yeah. Well, I mean, it's worse than heckling, Mark. I mean, I think you were howled down. It was it was an appalling spectacle, to be honest with you. I mean, uh, I was quite and then shocking. The march of oh, the well, indeed. Well, at the at the, at the, at the, um, at the kangaroo court, the Labour Party hearing, where we had the the kind of uh, the lynch mob coming from the parliamentary lynch mob. Yeah, I mean, disgrace, disgraceful scenes, really. And you know, th that's why I think it's so appalling that uh, you know you've been vindicated. And I know it's not directly in relation to that particular. Uh, case against the, the Labour Party, but it is related to it. Chris, it related to it. 
people are seeing it that way. Yes, I know, of course. No, it did absolutely related um, to it. And and then that's why I think, you know, more people, well, there should be more coverage and there should have been more solidarity and support uh, from from people, both before and certainly uh, kind of more, you know, recognition of the uh, brave step that you took in 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 taking on the Jewish Chronicle. It's quite a thing, isn't it, to, to take a libel action. I mean, you must have, that was uh, quite a bold step, Mark, to go to law in that way because the implications can be quite um, significant, can't they, if you are not successful, as we've just discovered in, in the case that we've taken against the Labour Party, the Left Legal Fighting Fund and the Labour Activists for Justice. We've been landed with a cost bill that has to be found by the 2nd of August uh, of £110,000. So, you know, and libel actions could be even more costly. And so it was, it was well, a great step. Mark. to that, as I've I think I've told you, I will be making a, a donation. Uh, I must. I oh, know. Well, we're grateful to that, Mark. But I'm just thinking, I'm just interested, though, Mark. I mean, clearly you must have felt incredibly strongly to take that risk when you when you did. And I mean, w were you concerned about the potential financial implications or did you just feel that you got such a strong case that you didn't think you could lose it? It's I had a risk, isn't it, going to court? But it's a casino. The defamation laws in this country are a casino. They're the rich... Uh, essentially man's law uh, you have to have uh, money in six figures potentially to fight a libel action to defend your reputation to defend your yeah. name and i just think that you've been agile uh, you've been um, sharp-sighted in terms of setting up the legal fund uh, we've got to fight with every weapon at our disposal against the injustice that is the current Labour Party. The yeah. disciplinary process is not fit for purpose. Democracy, it appears to me, has been hijacked by a clique around the current leader. Um, 90 staff being sacked. Can you believe it? In the modern yeah. Labour Party. Mm, no, indeed, it's and some true. of that because of the hundreds of thousands, if not millions of pounds, the party spent on attacking its own members. Mm. Just absolutely incredible that he threw almost a million pounds at Sam Matthews, who was a head of the uh, Compliance Star Chamber, kicking members out, and John Ware, a mm. former son attack dog reporter who made the BBC Panorama program Is Labour Anti-Semitic, which I, as a journalist of more than 40 years standing, am to um, totally ashamed of. It's not journalism. It was just mm. pure propaganda. And Although there is a there is there is a libel action um, uh, being yeah, taken I mean, by uh, where, I mean, um, for, for, for um, indeed, um, for, for making that very uh, uh, self-same observation. Um, so we'll see how how that I transpires mean, in, the, in the court. Paid off by Starmer. People like mm. Matt. Yes. People like John Stolliday. And we should yes. call out their names. They were paid off for sabotage. For running a separate well, fund headed up by Tom Watson to fund right-wing anti-Corbyn parliamentary candidates mm. and to um, work night and day, as Mandelson said, to uh, undermine the democratically, the twice democratically elected leader of the Labour Party, Jeremy Corbyn. They shouldn't have been receiving a payoff. No. They should have been done for gross misconduct. Well, I think there's 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 hundreds of thousands of uh, members and probably millions of supporters who would agree with you on that, uh, Mark. That's for, that's for sure. But I mean, obviously, that was that was great news with your case last week, and uh, and that's a sort of you know you've struck a blow, really. I think for uh, for, for many of us who feel that uh, you know the odds are very much stacked against us. But I just wanted to get your thoughts, Mark, about the other uh, news from last week in relation to the prescriptions that the party has now. Uh, put into place, which is basically banning various organisations, various anti-racist socialist organisations uh, that uh, that uh, 
Keir Starmer wants to stamp out this toxic extremism, as he, as he referred to it as, as being. Uh, what's your thoughts on that, on, on organisations like, well, our own Resist, the Resist movement and uh, Socialist Appeal and uh, Labour and Exile Network and Labour Against the Witch Hunt? What's, what's your thoughts about the, uh, the latest uh, moves to prescribe those organisations? I think that uh, prescription, dealing with your political opponents and their ideas, by administrative means, is wrong. Mm. I oppose the expulsion of the militant tendency way back in the early 1980s. Yeah. In fact, Jeremy Corbyn, as I recall, was convener of Labour Against the Witch Hunt. I think he was. At that period. And I have to say, his voice was silent for five years against the witch hunt. Uh, this time round and certainly when people were being disciplined in constituency labor parties in support of him when he was unjustly suspended from the parliamentary labor party he had the whip withdrawn by evans and starmer yeah so they're um harmed and the very person whose voice would have been very powerful in their support was absent he only seemed to find that voice when he personally was criticised in the, uh, what are they called, uh, Equal Human Rights uh, Commission? No, the Equalities and Human yeah. Rights Commission, yeah. Yeah, yeah. that's right. When he's criticised in the report, then he swings into action and talks mm. about uh, allegations of anti-Semitism had been exaggerated. It had taken him five years to say that. This is what Jewish comrades were saying, mm. who said that the issue was being weaponized, had been weaponized to attack Jeremy Corbyn. And don't forget, several of the people who were disciplined, including Jackie Walker and Tony Greenstein, being expelled were Jewish. Yeah. And, and there's, an was, interesting, uh, there's an interesting uh, article in the Electronic Intifada, I think it's today, Mark, I don't know if you've uh, seen it, where... The Labour Party is apparently threatening uh, legal action against uh, Tony Greenstein, uh, uh, maybe some others as well, but Tony is certainly implicated um, because of some criticisms he's made against the party for banning parties from uh, discussing uh, issues in relation to uh, uh, Palestine and, and, and Israel. Uh, so they're kind of doubling down, aren't they, on, on this? I mean, they, they're not, it doesn't look like they're, they're, they're about to stop any time soon i just wonder where where this is all going to end it doesn't seem to be doing the labor party very much good electorally uh, certainly financially it's costing them a lot of money both in terms of legal costs that you've mentioned but also in lost subscriptions because tens of thousands of people have left the party tens of thousands more are likely to to go i mean where do you think this is all going to end up for the for the party and what, what does it say about politics in this country well, I'm sad to say that uh, I think the uh, Starmer lot are not unhappy with hundreds of thousands of lefties leaving the party. They want a small SDP-type party funded by Mandelson's mates in industry. Mm. Uh, and they'll be going for other groups. They will be attacking the trade union link. We've seen this before, haven't we, Chris? Oh yes, indeed. It's it's certainly it's nothing new in that sense. But it seems to be it seems to be more relentless, and they seem to be more having more success. They seem to be having more success this time. I just wonder though what your thoughts are about what the implications that that has for political discourse in this country, for a you know political choice for democracy in this country. I mean, well, you all know that I played a role in helping to set up um, uh, free speech in Labour. Yes. I came up with the name. I mean, yes. I'm devastated that giants in our movement, like Ken Loach, can be under threat of expulsion. Yeah. Yeah. You know, this yeah. um, socialist filmmaker mm. who's done a huge amount for promoting socialist values in culture, in politics. And my good friend Ian Hodgson, the president of the Bakers Union, Mm. who we actually encouraged to become a patron of Labour Against the Witch Hunt. 
Yes. Apparently also under threat. So, of course, I'm wholly opposed to this. Had I been around in the 1920s, I would have opposed the Communist Party being disaffiliated in 1924. I talk about it yeah. uh, in my book. Yeah. We yeah. should be widening the socialist family, not narrowing it. Yeah, and indeed. Back back in the day with Comrade Sack, I mean, he, he, didn't he stand as a as a as a Labour and co co communist on a joint ticket? Did he not? A, indeed, yeah, and that's why he was able to do that in 1922, yeah. 1923, yeah. and 1924. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, and uh, since that time, really, the Labour Party has been increasingly a tool of the of the establishment, which is a, which is a great tragedy, and. Uh, you know, it just leads me to the conclusion that the, the future for the Labour Party as a vehicle for socialism is non-existent now. And but who are the right wing going to have to deliver leaflets during election time to canvas, exactly. to uh, phone banks? Because they don't do it. They're too busy drinking claret with each mm. other. The likes of Alistair Campbell, um, Peter Mandelson, uh, and that, uh, you know, uh, posh set, the Social yeah. Democrats. Um, but it, Mark, even, even if even if uh, people were prepared to put leaflets out for them, with the sort of program that they're putting forward now, it wouldn't really make a great deal of difference, would it? They'd be they'd be tinkering at the at the margins, wouldn't they? Uh, in terms of the uh, direction well, of Trump for this country. Comes up with, because this man was elected, saying that he was the unity candidate. Remember. And that he wouldn't be uh, jettisoning uh, the Jeremy Corbyn uh, manifesto. He had his fingers crossed, I think, when he was saying that, Mark. Well, a lot of Corbyn supporters voted for him, and I can't <laughs> understand why. <laughs> well, tell me about it, mate. The choice wasn't very great, though, was it? I mean, none of them were, any, were up to a, 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 a great deal, the, the candidates that were on offer. Uh, all of them had capitulated to the uh, Israel lobby. Um, all of them had really kind of participated and joined in the witch hunt. So there wasn't really much of a of a choice. I didn't I didn't feel anyway really. Rebecca but, Long Bailey. Uh, I mean, she was a parliamentary comrade of yours. Uh, well, and it would have but, been good to have a woman leader, wouldn't it? Except she threw me under the bus and and uh, and joined in the smears. So you know, I'm not sure really that she was uh, uh, would have made a great deal of difference, frankly. But I, I just but can't see the Labour Party's uh, electoral prospects now are are enhanced in any way, shape, or form by the direction that they are uh, they are taking. But uh, and that's but why I think an alternative is needed. But anyway, just because she was uh, in uh, um, John McDonald's team, yes. Um, she was pushed forward and let's start examining the record of our former leaders mm. john mcdonald mm. who given the choice to support unison's first black general secretary my ex labor party black sections comrade roger mckenzie supported paul holmes mm. a white man and these things shouldn't slip under the radar. We should start asking questions about what our movement looks like, who it supports. Where were the trade unions during Black Lives Matter protests that I, I was on? It was well, a that's, uh, that, 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 that is something which is, uh, yeah, I mean, I think that was a feature really across the country. In a way, that was, there was a positive side to that, that, that it was, though those protests were being organised by by new people, by new activists, and that, that's something to be encouraged, but we need to bring people together. And I think as far as Unison is concerned, what, what was needed was to ensure that there was some, uh, you know, there was a kind of unified left uh, candidate, a socialist candidate, uh, and that's where they fell down uh, and ended up with a with a right winger being uh, elected. And we'll see what happens in, in Unite as well now. But uh, let's go to uh, Sean anyway, uh, Mark. We've been going for about half an hour now. And, uh, and let's see what uh, reaction there's been from our viewers this evening. You may have a few comments and questions from, from people who've been watching on. Sean. Hi. Um, hi, Mark. Um, I can just say, um, you know, 
all the things that you've been talking about has made me so angry bringing all that back. I, I can't begin to imagine how you've been feeling um, throughout all of this process. I mean, I've been through it myself, um, but not as publicly as, as you have. Um, and the, the, the whole image of that witch hunt when the, the, the white Labour MPs walked behind Ruth Smith absolutely made me sick it was disgusting um i can't i just don't have the words to express how that made me feel um it was it was appalling behavior from um so-called representatives um of, of the labor party absolutely appalling um i think you were they very they were there to protect protector do i look like yeah. someone who needs uh, pe white people need to be protected from you know, they'd never marched on uh, fighting racism uh, for the victims of the Windrush scandal, uh, mm -hmm. Renfell Tower. Where had Wes Treating and, and all of these people, Margaret Hodge, uh, Alf Dubbs, Ruth Gerber, director of um, Labour Friends of Israel, had they ever come forward and opposed Black deaths in custody, where well, we've had to wait now just uh, the other month for the first police officer to be jailed for kicking a black man in his head until he was dead and tasering him until he was dead. A former footballer, Aston Villa footballer, right? Yeah. Where have these yeah. characters, these politicians been all this time? But there was one black man. I, I totally agree. It's it's appalling. I mean, I've I've been on quite a lot of um, anti-racist, um, you know, uh, demonstrations facing up to the the racist EDL and all the rest of them, and I've never once seen a politician there demonstrating against them, but I have seen politicians stand up in Manchester demonstrating on behalf of the Zionist lobby. Um, which again, you know, it absolutely disgusts me. Um, their behaviour and they, a lot of them, they need to take a long, hard look at themselves in the mirror, basically. Mm. Um, okay, so we'll turn to some comments now. Um, cool Daddy says, he says, how much did you win from um, the Justice Court, Mark? Now, I think that's uh, probably um, non-disclosable, uh, but he does go on to... Oh, you're frozen, Sean. ...to say, will you sue the Labour Party? Have I frozen? Am I back? No, you're back now, mate. Yeah, what was that? Will you... Okay. So he goes on to say, and will you sue the Labour Party now for defamation? Well, first of all, on the sum, I haven't received anything because that's not how these things work. There are all sorts of negotiations. Chris will know about this behind the scenes on costs, fees, and, and whatnot. Until that is tied up, I don't get a penny. So that's the first point. The second point is I did take legal action against the Labour Party and it lasted for four years and cost more than £30,000 raised from public subscription and got nowhere. And I want someone to tell me, I got defeated by the system. Had I pursued it and lost as we've seen with the comrades who now face a legal bill of 110, 117,000 pounds, I'd have lost everything. And this is what the Labour Party wanted to do to me, to grind me into the ground, to make an example of me. And I couldn't do that to my family and face financial ruin. And I was let down by the lawyers. The lawyers started off by saying, you've got a 50-50 chance of winning based on the Labour Party's breach of contract. Let me just explain. The courts could not have retried my case. They made that quite clear. All they could do is look at the Labour Party's rules and see where they had breached their own rules. And I was told that even if they have rotten rules, it's for the membership to sort out those rules in the disciplinary process, not the courts. Because the Labour Party is not a public body. It's a voluntary organisation, like a stamp club or an allotment society run by the members. 
you know, like municipal mutual, uh, uh, what are they called? Insurance companies and, and whatnot. Yeah. So you know, you you're faced in a double bind. Yeah. And I would like someone to tell me who has ever successfully sued the Labour Party and been reinstated. And I haven't yet had an example. The militant tendency way back in the early 1980s, and I'm told this by a former general secretary of the party, won the first round of their legal case against the party, against expulsion, but ultimately lost. Yeah. So, cool daddy, I know you've been at me on social media about this, and you've been a fantastic supporter for more than four years, but you're barking under the, uh, up the wrong tree. Don't ask me about when am I going to sue the Labour Party for defamation. I can't. I wanted to sue Sam Matthews. I wanted to sue John Ware. And every legal firm I went to, that after they said the awful thing they did about me, actually in the Jewish Chronicle, and I was told by every law firm, you haven't got a chance because the Labour Party it says that you're anti-Semitic. So therefore the judge will believe them because they're an authoritative body. It's disgusting. It, it really is. I, I had a, a similar experience with a, a journalist from The Times who then went on to write a book called Left Out. And in there, he described how he was given information about members from an ex-staffer of the Labour Party who'd signed um, a, a compromise agreement. So I'm assuming he will have got some money when he, he signed that compromise agreement to leave the Labour Party. Um, he then um, get passed this information over to um, this Times journalist goes on to describe how this ex-staffer passed the information over to Tom Watson's um, advisor, uh, Adilipour, I think he's called, somebody Adilipour, uh, and it was then passed on to the Times journalist who then wrote stories on it. I was told at four o'clock on a Friday afternoon that a story was going out about me on uh, in the Sunday Times. Um, I didn't have any chance to respond to it. And uh, it was pure lies. Everything was lies. But I have not got, like you, Mark, I have not got the funds to be able to take the times to court um, and sue them for defamation. I can't put my family through that. Um, I couldn't risk losing my house. I'd already lost my job um, and had to fund my own tribunal, um, which, you know, was, was a lot of money and had a lot of effect on me and my family. Um, so... Yeah, I mean, there is no justice. There really is no justice. It's awful. Um, going back to the comments, Kevin Rathbone says, uh, what is Mark's new political affiliation now Labour has been taken over? My affiliation hasn't changed in more than 40 years. I'm a socialist. I'm black and red. I started my politics in the trade union movement. From my teens, when I was father of the chapel of the National Union of Journalists on my uh, paper, um, which is a shop steward, basically. There are mothers of chapels as well. And I went on to become the chair of the Joint Shop Assurance Committee at Thames Television, responsible for 1,500 workers from four different unions. I guess I'm a bit of a syndicalist on the quiet quiz. <laughs> well, you know, there's a case for that, mate. I mean... Uh... The first industrial dispute, um, I believe, in the country uh, took place in, in Derby when the silk mill workers were, were locked out. It predated the Tolpuddle Martyrs by a number of months. And uh, they were syndicalists, the people uh, who were uh, you know involved in that. So, yeah, it's got a longer tradition, to comrade. And, yeah, maybe that's where we need to go, mate. Maybe that's where we need to go. Uh, because I think the Labour Party is completely broken. And um, I'm helping some black comrades and trade unionists set up the liberation movement, which you'll be hearing a lot more about. And um, I know I can count on the support of Resist. Definitely. Uh, because it is desperately needed. There is a vacuum. And Black Lives Matter, I think that they uh, have uh, created a momentum, if you excuse the term, and we've got to build on that and make something sustainable. Because what we yeah. don't need is these things that sort of pop up like a firework 
and then disappear again. Don't forget the Black Lives Matter started in 2012 after Tray Trayvon Martin, a yeah. teenager, black teenager, was uh, murdered by a yes, security yeah. guard in, in America. Yeah. Uh, and they uh, popped up in 2012 and then they went to sleep and only woke up again last summer, which is how many years? 19 and 12, seven years. We need yeah. something sustained because we're facing very serious racist threats and the growth of the far right, not just in Hungary with Orban and Bolsonaro in um, uh, Brazil, but in this country, they've infiltrated the Tory party. We've got a home secretary that's talking about bringing back chain gangs, deporting yes. people to uh, islands where they can or be put in container ships. Uh, yeah. Continuing with these deportation flights of people mm. back to Jamaica and other countries uh, that they've never known, that they left yeah. as children. To me, but you know, on that, mark, on, that, on that mark, um, I mean, there was a wonderful expression of solidarity in, I think it was Glasgow, a month or so back. I don't know, you maybe oh, you saw it. Where, with the yeah, people you saw it, yeah. Where, streets freeing, yeah, a detained migrant from a police yeah. van i mean this was uh, people they, 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 they were due for deportation weren't they and then they, they, they right. just they, just they blocked the streets it was fantastic uplifting to see and we need to close down those detention centers yes I agree. Call concentration camps they are pregnant They're women disgrace. people yeah. suffering from covid covid pandemic spread in those confined disgusting uh, uh, places uh, and well, we've, uh, we've, go on. No, I was just going to say we've covered the uh, some of that on, on here before now, but we do need to continue to to raise that because it's appalling. And uh, um, Shadi uh, Shadi Edwards uh, Dashti, I think uh, her name is, who is the uh, reporter who's done a lot of work on this on exposing the the Napier barracks in particular. That's and she, right. she came on, on our uh, uh, programme and she did a lot of uh, great reporting uh, on that. And uh, and as I think really a lot, do, lot down to her efforts, I don't know others have been involved, but but she's really shone a spotlight on it. And, uh, and there's been a bit of movement there. But it is, you're absolutely right, Mark. It's absolutely despicable. It's appalling. The fifth biggest economy in the world and we're treating people like that. My God, it's outrageous. And these attacks anyway. on our civil liberties. Yes. This yeah. Uh, cops bill that would um... oh I think we've lost you Mark you're, you're frozen Mark no, I think we've lost Mark I'll just go through some more comments then whilst we try and get Mark back Yeah. Okay. Um, Alex Savina on Facebook says the media's absence screams conspiracy well done Mark for fighting your corner against the corrupt and malicious forces who are so determined to destroy democracy Kevin Rathbone says, too much self-preservation on the left, absolutely no solidarity anymore, especially in the Labour Party. Ian Donovan says, unfortunately, there is a lot of weakness on the left and incoherence about Zionism on the left. It has led to different left-wing trends throwing each other under the bus in the face of the Zionist attack. There needs to be some major examination and discussion of this weakness to try to overcome it. Have you got any comments on that, Chris or Chris? Can you do it again? Because we had technical. No, oh, we, we've got technicals again, Mark. We are, right. <laughs> just as you said you that. comments on that, on the attack from the Zionist left? Yeah, I mean, clearly it's been a pernicious attack and it's been very successful and it's been um, it's been facilitated, it's got to be said, by the response of, of the, uh, the Corbyn leadership uh, that continued to give ground to them and treat to them as if they were um, acting in good faith. These were bad faith actors. There's no doubt about that. And we know what the Zionist lobby is about. It's about stopping criticism of, of Israel, the apartheid state of Israel, which is meeting out the most, uh, 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 well, it's, it's unbelievable levels of brutality against the Palestinian uh, people. And as I've said on this program, on a number of occasions, uh, I've spoken to ANC uh, veterans who say that the who lived through the apartheid South African regime who say that the apartheid in in Palestine being inflicted by the Zionist regime is far far worse 
And uh, what they're doing is they're using their influence uh, when they are influential, uh, certainly inside the Labour Party, and we know they are influential across other political uh, parties. And that was exposed. This is not a conspiracy theory or, or anti-Semitic uh, trope. This is a, a fact that was revealed by the Al Jazeera documentary. And going back even further than that, 10 years before that, I think it was, uh, where Peter Oban exposed the the uh, pernicious influence of the Israel lobby on, on the body politic in this country. As long ago, I think it was 2009, he did his documentary for Channel 4. You, I don't think you'd get a documentary like that on a mainstream broadcast channel now. So their influence is very, very powerful. And, and it's been made stronger because those of us on the left, or some people, not us, <laughs> some people on the left, some people who should know better on the left, have actually not been prepared to show solidarity and have run away, and indeed not just run away and, and hid. They've joined in the attacks, they've joined in the, the smears, they've joined in throwing good comrades like Mark under the bus. And this is where it's led us to now with Boris Johnson, this appalling right-wing ideologically uh, driven uh, conservative party with a, with a, you know, a, 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 a Bullingdon Club veteran as a prime minister. Uh, you know, with a huge majority in the country mm. and, uh, you know, inflicting, uh, you know, terrible privations on, on millions of people. And it's just going to get worse. And, uh, you know, I mean, and Mark mentioned the, the Home Secretary, I mean, and the sort of extremism that she's in, indulging in now. I mean, it's it's quite a frightening spectacle, really. And, uh, you know, we, uh, without wanting to sound, uh, you know, sort of... Uh, um, hyperbolic about it the the uh the potential for uh, you know for fascism uh, is uh, is growing by the day it seems to me yeah. and that's what we do need to be guard against and the way well, to guard against that is through solidarity civil, oh, civil liberties you know these um spy cops bill that i mentioned that will legitimize yeah. extrajudicial killing abroad exactly that needs to be opposed i mean Keir Starmer has built up a reputation uh, based on him being some sort of tribune of civil liberties uh, in the legal yeah. profession. No. Uh, and yet he is uh, going along with this. Uh, you know, the uh, Kill the Bill campaign, the, the bill that would uh, outlaw Black Lives Matter and uh, occupy and um, extinction rebellion. Yeah. And even uh, Sarah... Everard vigil that I was actually on yeah. when the police battered women. I mean, what is that all about? Uh, just more, I'm actually just suing at the moment for being assaulted by a, a, a police sergeant myself. So yeah. we live in terrible times. Um, we need a proper opposition that will fight the Tories over their pandemic corruption. Uh, handing out billions of pounds worth of contracts to do with PPE, yeah. to do with uh, vaccines and tests and, and trace. You know, the Tories should be on the ropes now. Yeah. 10 to 15 percent. Yep, we've lost Mark again. This guy's frozen. But no, I mean, it makes a very, uh, very important uh, point. Like yeah, we lost you there, Mark. We lost you there, Mark. Sorry. Carry on. No, we lost him again. Uh, and we found out, Chris, and we found out this week that um, the organisation that's doing training on anti-Semitism for the Labour Party, JLM, are trying to stop the discussion of Palestine. Is that right? Yes, absolutely, it is, and uh, you know, it's the, the, you know the days of free speech in the Labour Party are long gone, and it's getting worse. The Labour Party is is an entity, really, is uh, is a husk. It's a, a hollow husk, really, that has no semblance of socialism. And I know a lot of people are still wedded to it, but I think we need to wean ourselves off the Labour Party. And as difficult as it is to try and build an alternative, I think it's our only. Our only choice. And I know it's hard. Um, and it's even harder when you think that only a few years ago, there was such hope, such expectation. Yeah. We'd been, you know, we'd, we'd been marched up to the top of the mountain, as I've often said, we glimpsed the promised land. 
and uh, and then we were marched back down again and and it was just within touching distance it was within our grasp and uh, and it was you know the, the opportunity was blown um notwithstanding the massive forces that were ranged against us i, I mean i just think it, you know different decisions more solidarity uh, a willingness to stand up to the Zionists. Some solidarity, Chris. Come on, there wasn't any solidarity. Well, yes, no, indeed. Well, I take your point on that. But, I mean, you know, the uh, the, 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 the weaponization of anti-Semitism was used as a convenient stick, obviously to oppose the pro-Palestinian stance that Jeremy had set out, but it was used to stop a anti-imperialist policy across the peace coming uh, to the fore and obviously to stop a socialist uh, program on the domestic agenda and uh, you know people should have seen that people uh, it, it was pretty obvious what was what was happening um you know when you see people who with a, like mark i mean just take the example of mark with such a long standing record of anti racism for uh, and we know Mark's that's not just his only uh, uh, issue. I mean, he's, as he's, he's said himself, he's, he's a long standing socialist and, uh, he, you know, he fights on a range of different topics. But uh, people like him, a prominent, influential black guy like Mark, you know, had to be taken down. Same with Jackie Walker, influential black uh, Jewish woman had to be taken down. Uh, you know, people like me who got some traction inside the Labour Party on the democracy forms, had to be taken down. Jeremy Corbyn himself, obviously, had to be taken down. And, you know, it, it was, uh, you just look at who the people were being targeted, look at their record. And, uh, you know, the, the, the absence of solidarity, well, uh, what the historians will make of it remains to be seen, but I think they will, they've not covered themselves in glory by the uh, the cowardice that was, that was shown i've got to say but no. but you know That's we have crazy. to learn that lesson and, and build and build and build afresh you know it's it's a lesson and uh, you know they've not they've not you know we're still here so you know we're going to keep going and we need to learn from that and uh, draw strength from it and uh, and use that i understand that you're writing a book chris Yes, yes, I am. And it's nearly finished now. So I'm hoping to get a publisher before the end of the year, but we'll see whether anybody will take it. Because we need a critique from a yeah. left perspective of the Corbyn project. And we haven't yes. yet had it. No, is it? Talking about uh, Alex Nunn or Pogron from the Sunday Times or Owen Jones. We need a critique from the Corbyn left. What well, I mean, I've made. Yeah, I mean, I've written, uh, I've written as you say. I mean, I'm nearly, nearly finished it now, and uh, it's very much written from. It's a kind of a personal perspective in that, rather than a kind of a, you know, as it were, a, a sort of uh, an objective, stand back and and look, uh, sort of academic um, uh, uh, treatise. It's, uh, it's very much from my perspective, but it has and it will uh, address, I think, a lot of the the points that you've just stated need to be addressed in terms of where the failings that were and hopefully i've i've managed to capture some of that uh, but uh, there's a there's a bit of an iterative process i've got to go through yeah i'm just full enough was uh, just going through it today just sort of editing it and so on i want to get some some comments from from close comrades about uh, their take on it and there may be things i've missed that we need to add into it but as i say i'm hoping to to get it out by the end of the year it may be a little bit longer than that depending on as i say getting getting publisher uh, but i've also collaborated on another book which is looking explicitly at the at the um the way in which anti-semitism was weaponized to destroy my role as an mp and so we do have a publisher for that and that is imminent now i mean it should be out any any minute so uh, look out for that one but once it is that obviously we'll try and we'll try and uh, can I just as as we one can. quick question in before we finish? Finally, where is the missing Ford report? Well, funny enough, Mark and I were having a conversation offline about that, weren't we, Mark? Uh, 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 yes, good question, really. But let's be careful what we uh, what we wish for. I don't know what you would say, Mark. Yeah, I agree with you that um, yeah. uh, I've got inside uh, contacts, and um, it isn't going to be pretty. Um, no. I can tell you that they're going to say that uh, there was anti-Semitism in the party, uh, that the handling of it was, uh, well, that it was mishandled. Um, and uh, that doesn't help us. Um, no, I mean, and I think we have to just consider, you know, who, who is, who I mean, is 
as anti-Semitism the party uh, as there is in society. And I've said that at the very beginning yeah, exactly, uh, yeah. of, of uh, uh, my contribution. Uh, mm -hmm. But we know from Jewish comrades who supported Jeremy Corbyn, who were saying that it was weaponized to harm him, to destroy him, to destroy a socialist leader of the Labour Party, yeah. uh, what uh, some of it was all about. And that you yeah. had people in the parliamentary Labour Party totally and utterly opposed to his leadership who were working for the Labour Party to lose the general election in order yeah. to get rid well, of him. Yeah, no, I mean, I think that's well documented. Now, listen, we're out of time. Uh, we've gone two minutes over. Thank you very much indeed, uh, Mark. Uh, I know you were on a tight uh, schedule and you've not been uh, in the best of health just uh, recently as well. So thank you for taking time and spending uh, just over an hour with us uh, this evening and uh, it's prompted a lot of uh, interesting questions and uh, and it's useful to to hear your perspective and uh, congratulations again on striking a blow for us and in, in winning. Thank all the supporters. There's been thousands of them on social yes. media, phone calls, a heartfelt thank you. You've really kept me going all this time and the love and the solidarity from you, Chris, uh, from Resist, um, from, from you know, editors have come to me from <laughs> now retired from right-wing newspapers congratulating me. Can you believe yeah. that? Uh, a yeah, former so student that's now an editor uh, congratulated yeah. me. So yeah. as you said in the past, it's not about left and right on this question. It's about right to, uh, and wrong, and I yeah. was wronged, uh, and I need yeah. to uh, get the injustice reversed, the miscarriage yeah. of, of justice reversed with, with your continued support. A big thank you. It's a pleasure, comrade, and uh, yeah, that's that's a really important message. Uh, solidarity is the key, and we keep emphasising that at most of our programmes, and if we do stick together, then we, we will prevail in the end. So, listen, thank you again, Mark. Thanks, uh, Sean. Thank you, everybody, for watching. We'll be back again next week at the same time, 7 o'clock. See you then. Good night.